I was supposed to do this video like at least four days ago or something like that, but but I'm gonna do it, go ahead and do it now because it because we all because it's because it's getting to the point where it's like yeah whatever the top ten of 2015. Coming in at number 10 is Rob Gronkowski. The top tight end on, the, on this year's countdown. Believe he had, and yeah, Gronk had uh, 12 touchdowns uh, tying, with, uh, tying uh, I believe, uh, Antonio Gates. Who's suspended for performance enhancing drugs? Um, it is what it is. But as far as Gronk goes, yeah, I'll come back player of the year. Um, not much, not much really to say about him other than the fact that he returned to to the Gronk that we've been accustomed to seeing since he came into the league. So yeah, no, so yeah, since he came into the league, I believe he had. I, I can't remember, but who cares? Left time for this shit. Um, coming in at number nine is. Marshawn Lynch, running back of you know who. We all know he doesn't need no introduction. Uh, other than the fact that he got fucking robbed. <laughs> I mean, fu he's finally in the top ten or ten, but you know he should be in the top five to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, to be fair, he's he's twenty nine years old. He's gonna be thirty or whatever. But at the same time, he's got a lot of years left, and he's proven that he has a lot of years left. Well, I don't think, okay, no, let me, let me, I'll take that back. Let me take that back. I do apologize. Not a lot of years left, of course. Uh, somewhat, but, but, you know, some would argue that he should be number one on this year's countdown, period. I wouldn't go that far, but <sighs> whatever. All right, coming in at number eight is Antonio Brown, uh, 129 catches, uh, second uh, in the uh, second all all time, the uh, second most uh, in it, all time in a single season. Yeah, when you're catching, yeah, when you're catching more than five passes per game, and you don't get that if you don't, and if you're you're not catching five passes. A game at least if you're not getting open it, it's just not happening oh and oh yeah and the and the Steelers and the Steelers as far as far as offensive line goes Roethlisberger and Brown had to deal with had to deal with the shit offensive line as well you know there's only one good player and that's Marquise Pouncey but I, as far as a, as far as a really good uh Lyman, but 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 Ben Roethlisberger can create time with his feet more than his because he doesn't stand around in the freaking pocket all day. I will give Big Ben that, but gotta give Antonio Brown his due. People are still people were still bitching about about Des Bryant being ranked lower than. Than both uh, Brown and Julio Jones. Oh, how dare they! They rank them. They're not. They're not better than Des Bryant. Maybe they are better than Des Bryant. So, or stop to think about that for a moment. Uh, I don't care if you people don't think it's fair to to use the offensive line uh, deal when it comes to Des Bryant. And Julio Jones and Antonio Brown, but it is what it is. <laughs> Deal with it. Number seven is Andrew Luck. You know the NFL love the NFL players. They love they love being comedians. I think I don't know how much the NFL players anyway ha have have to do with the with the voting process in general. I mean, you know, there's still some speculation out there. But really, oh yeah, lucky seven. That's real fucking funny, yeah. Anyway. 
Anyway, a little bit too high. I'm, I'm sorry. He should be a little bit lower. You know, he's he should be he should be behind Ben Roethlisberger. Fucking uh. Hold up. Yeah, he should be behind Ben Roethlisberger. He should be behind Drew Brees. And some would some would say lower than Tony Romo as well. I mean. He did kind of beat Tony Rome. He kind of did beat an Andrew Luck-led football team uh, last year. Yeah, uh, beat him soundly. Great. And don't say it's because Andrew Luck didn't have a great uh, receiving core around him. I mean, his receiving core has actually been getting better. The, the players that they drafted in 2012, I mean, it always helps to have uh, Kobe Fleener, who was his, coll who was his college uh, teammate in Stanford. Um, T.Y. Hilton's get T.Y. Hilton's developing well, as is Dwayne with Allen. Um, and Andrew Luck's getting better too, but he's still. It's just it's just the little things. And people are, are also saying, well, Andrew Luck is Andrew Luck is asked to do a lot. Yeah, when you're the number one overall pick, you're you're kind of expected to do a lot. It's, it kind of goes with the territory. So yeah, so yeah. He, so yeah, he should be behind a lot of quarterbacks. The one quarterback that he should be should be ahead of. More on that in a second. But he's in the top five. Oh yeah. Uh, but but let's let's go with number six, Calvin Johnson. Once again, the top receiver. He didn't have the, he didn't have the greatest of numbers last year, and by the way, I was wrong. When I said seven games. Obviously, it was obviously three games. Don't ask me because I've been I've been fucking because I've been I haven't had much sleep lately. You know, I don't know why I, I don't know why I keep forgetting to sleep, but whatever. And I need some sleep. Holy shit. Anyway, but but yeah, as far as Calvin Johnson goes. Listen, it's not always about the numbers, people. Otherwise, Antonio Brown would be the number one re receiver in this year's countdown. But he's not. You know, it's all about the body. It's all about the body of work sometimes. It's, it's, yeah, and, you know, this whole shit is just a little confusing. So, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a combination of of how you well you of of performance from last year, a projection of, thi of this year, and body of work, basically. That's and sometimes, in most cases, in some, in, some, in some cases, it's all about a respect thing than anything else. And to prove that, number five, Peyton Manning. Nothing against Peyton. He threw once again. He threw for 39 touchdown passes. He's been throwing touchdown. He's been throwing a, a, a good number of touchdown passes since coming to Denver. Um, but we gotta be realistic here. He he threw like 15 interceptions last year. Luck threw 16. And by the way, Luck uh, led the NFL in touchdown passes last year. You know. But the thing is, I believe Aaron Rodgers threw 38 touchdown passes. More on that in a second as well. I'll get to that in a minute. Um. But yeah. And the last time we saw Peyton play was when he, when yes he had that, yes he had a good start. The team was up seven nothing. It was start. It was starting to go well for the Broncos, but then, but then after that he he played flat, just like the rest of the fucking team. You know. And people will use the the excuse well. He, Peyton had two quad injuries, and yeah, there was no doubt. Yeah, I was hearing reports about that too. They had two quad injuries, and one of those quad injuries was torn, or something stupid like that. The fact of the matter is this, though. Yeah, and yes, the, the, uh, you're talking about the quad. It's like a big part of the muscle or whatever. But Manning had a week to prepare. And he played flat. I mean, Rodgers was suffering a torn calf. Probably not the same thing. 
I don't know if it was torn or not, but it was definitely strained. Just like I don't know if it was torn, whatever. Whatever. Don't want to fucking ramble on too much, but Jesus Christ. Um. Yeah, Peyton, this should have been... Bottom line is this. Peyton should have been ranked lower. This, was, this should have been the year that Peyton sh should have taken a nosedive. But because of the weapons that he has around him, and Demarius Thomas is finally... The contract situation is finally done for Demarius Thomas. So, there is hope for 2015. Not much hope, but hope, there is hope. That's all I'm going to say. Coming in at number four, DeMarco Murray. Great year last year. It, i got to give him his due, but we got to be realistic here. Cowboys were running the football an awful lot, okay? And here's the common misconception. People were, yeah, the common misconception people make is that, well, well, the Cowboys needed to run the ball with DeMarco Murray. Wrong. The Cowboys just needed to run the ball, period. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care who you put at running back. If you're throwing the ball way too many times and you're running the ball very little times, you're not going to be a successful football team. It's not happening. Unless you play in the AFC, then maybe you have a chance, but Cowboys don't, last I checked. And that's the thing. It's just it's just the Cowboys have the best offensive line in football. I mean, now he's going with the with the re and now he's going to Philadelphia where they're revamping their offensive line. Um, good luck with that. Even with even if he even if he does get rest with the other two two good running backs like Ryan Matthews and Sproles. Who know who knows? It's too it's it's easy to say that now, but whatever. And besides, DeMarco Murray should have if he, if he's gonna carry the ball almost four hundred times, he you better break uh, Eric Dickerson's rushing record at that point. And he did, and he didn't do that. I'm not saying he's a horrible running back. I mean, give me a break, break. He deserves the bump. He deserves a bump up in the rankings. But higher than Marshawn Lynch? No, 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 no. <laughs> in fact, he should be lower. He should also be lower than Jamal Charles, and possibly Le'Veon Bell. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right, coming in at number three is Tom Brady. Uh, Another solid season for him. It was start. Yeah, it was starting to go. It was starting to, and people were starting to wonder after the loss of the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, oh, is Brady done or whatever the fuck? I mean, let's be realistic. He was 37 years old. He's 38 now. But then Brady shut the critics up for the rest of the season, and of course they won the Super Bowl. Oh, but with oh, but they, but it's because of controversy again. Yes, every time. The Patriots win the Super Bowl. Every time the Patriots win any type of playoff games, people have to mention Spygate. Even though, even though, look, even though looking back at it now, it was actually legal because Spygate became illegal in 06. The Patriots got caught cheating, basically just with, with just one game. Big fucking deal. Get over it. All right, all right, get the fuck over it. And now with fucking Deflate Gate, and now Brady being suspended for four games, and but the Brady haters they have to cry here because of course he's number three. If it's okay to have Peyton Manning at number five, then it's definitely okay for Brady to be number three. Get the fuck out of here. Number two is Aaron Rodgers. The top quarterback on the countdown. Uh, getting back to Rodgers. Uh, Rodgers only threw two touchdowns passes less than Peyton Manning. Uh, than, than Andrew Luck, excuse me. One touchdown less than Peyton Manning. And yet, Rodgers only threw five interceptions. Uh, zero at Lambeau Field. Of course, that was the regular. Of course, that was just the regular season. He did throw a few... Uh, he did throw uh, like two interceptions in that NFC Championship game. 
I believe it's two. <laughs> you know, some would argue that Tom Br and some would argue that Brady should have the top quarterback spot because of what he did, because of how he was able to pick apart that Seattle Seahawks defense. And people are going to, and, and of course, people are going to talk about injuries. Well, Rodgers faced a healthier Seahawks team. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Fuck. God damn it, man. Doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter at that point. It's the postseason, okay? And besides, the, those three Seahawks players that got injured, they were injured in that NFC Championship game, okay? So you can't you come up with that excuse either. But in any event, another outstanding season. Just too bad it got cut. Too bad it was cut short by the Seattle Seahawks. And that fucking mer hell, mer and that fucking uh, deep throw by by Russell Wilson to Jermaine Curse. Uh, but yeah, can't go wrong with these two. I don't care what I don't care what pe people say. But number one. As I and many others have predicted, it's J.J. Watt. Well, what can I say about J.J. Watt? He was all over the fucking field in 2014. There's a reason why he's the number one player. The guy, uh, 20 and a half, 20 sacks, his, his second 20 sack season in three years. Probably the first player ever to have two 20 sack seasons in, in a career. Oh, and he does, oh, and he plays, oh, and he, and he, he can occasionally score uh, a couple of touchdowns on offense. As he, as he has proven. Because he was, because he was a former tight end, apparently. And, oh yeah, he could also return touchdowns on defense. Good. Like that one interception by uh, that one interception against Buffalo, and then and then that fumble return against Indy. Of course, uh, Texans lost that game though. But yeah, now people are arguing about this as well. People are are bitching about this as well, saying that well, the 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 MVP of the NFL should always get the number one spot. Um, no, that's, no, 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 Again, that's not how it fucking works. I'm tired of this, of the, of the fucking excuses. I thought it was NFL's most valuable player, not NFL's most valuable offensive player. And J.J. Watt, he's being, you know, being the classy guy, of course, taking the high road and all this, that the quarterback is the most valuable player, blah, 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 blah. But give me a fucking break. Let's be realistic here. Had the Texans made the playoffs. Now that I think about it, the, even if the Texans did make the playoffs, they, the NFL would, and the Associated Press would find some way to fucking screw him out of the... Although, not really, because he did receive a, a good number of votes for, for MVP. Of course, Rodgers won it. Anyway, I don't want to go on all day about it, but it is what it is. So, Watts, number one, the first defensive player to... Have the number one to have the number one spot. Congrats to JJ Watt, and congrats to really every player that made the countdown by hook or crook, including Adam Vinatieri. Uh, uh, so my only complaints are my only complaints are uh, Marshawn Lynch should have made it the top running back spot up. Uh, Patrick Peterson went ranked way too high. I've, I've tried giving him a chance, but the past couple of years, eh, no. Perhaps, I understand he's got the diabetes issue, and and hope I hope I'm proven wrong because I'm because I fucking hate the guy. But and Joe Flacco being ranked way too low as well. I, I, he should have stayed where he was. Maybe fallen a little bit. May, no, 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 no. No, he should have stayed where he was. Okay, let's get the fuck out of here. And, uh, shit. No Niners player made the countdown, if I'm not mistaken. 
you figured at least a couple players deserve it. Like I said, I, I only mentioned Vernon Davis, but someone would make the argument about Antoine Bethea. And, of course, Anquan Bolden. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much, that will pretty much wrap up my reaction to the 2015 Top 100. Thank you very much for enduring this shit. This is 20 minutes fucking long. Way too fucking long for a reaction. But I need it, but I just had a lot to fucking say. So, thank you very much for enduring these videos. Uh, <laughs> guys, holy smoke. Without you guys, this would not be a lot of fun. I'll, let me, I'll tell you that right now. Now, so... So, till next time, later, fuckers.